Are you lost in the chaotic whirlwind of day-to-day busyness? Do you yearn for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Welcome to Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose, the podcast dedicated to empowering women on their journey of self-discovery and finding their true purpose through their own story. I'm your host, Brenda Simmons. Welcome to the Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose podcast. Today, we have Laura Mickler with us, and I'm so excited to have her here. She is a mindset coach, a yogi, and a huge believer in saying, why not? And I love that so much. She, Her coaching business focuses on determining, manifesting, and implementing the big dreams we have and helping people recognize their burnout. She spent more than a decade in the corporate financial world and walked away to coach and start her own yoga studio. Laura preaches that the money follows when you realize what your assignment here on earth is. Her work and her company, The Branch Collective, includes hosting a weekly podcast, coaching, and owning Sacred Steps Yoga Studio and Store. She lives in Indiana with her husband and her two boys and her two dogs, and I am so excited to talk about what she has going on in her life. And just because I just really felt like we we talked a little bit before we came on. And when we talked, I just felt like such a huge connection with her. So, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so curious because when we talked, you know, you you have kind of a similar background to mine where you mm-hmm. have a lot of had a lot of different things going on and a lot of different careers. Can you kind of tell us about your journey and, you know, what led you to where you're at now? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when we spoke and I I feel like I say this a lot and I need to like pause myself from saying it, but I always say I've had the weirdest career path ever. And part of that I think is, um, and especially for people in my generation and probably earlier, we all were kind of taught that life had like a certain cadence to it, right? Like you go to school, you go to college or you, you know, do a trade or whatever the case is, and then you get a job and then you get married and you have kids and, you know, it was all very laid out. And so and any, linear, right? yeah, any it's, deviation this, from and then that. You do this. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so where I kind of landed with my careers and I will say that all of my careers and you're going to hear, it's a very broad range of things, but they all made a lot of sense at the time for what I was doing. And so I actually have um, a teaching degree that I've never used. So I am a home ec teacher by trade, which if you know me, isn't a huge surprise. But if you only know me in a professional setting, that may be a little confusing. Um, So after after college, though, I actually got into working with my college sorority. And so I had been with them at various points um, right out of college. And then I went back in the fundraising realm. So I did that for a number of years. Um, I have a master's degree in higher ed administration. So I, again, continued kind of that fraternity sorority experience type of stuff. But right after grad school, went into community education. So I worked for Purdue University here in Indiana and did extension, which is 4-H, community education, all those kinds of things. Ironically, I did get into like kind of the financial education piece um, through that role. And then um, I'm trying to remember my path here, went to fundraising after that. And then when I was fundraising, I was the only person for the entire nation. So I was literally flying all around the country. We had our second baby at that point, and it was very hard to travel all the time with a newborn. So kind of decided to take a little break. I was a stay-at-home mom for about six months. And I will say I am a terrible stay-at-home mom. I was going to say that didn't last very long. (laughs) Yeah. I I might say my husband... Um, just went back to work after being a stay-at-home dad, and he's a fantastic stay-at-home dad. So you just have to know yourself with that. And it's okay if you're not a good stay-at-home mom. That took me a long time to to get through. But um, after that, I kind of fell into this job, and I really had just started like part-time doing the Facebook page, answering the phones, you know, just to kind of get out of the house sort of a thing. And that was at a mortgage company. And so one day I was typing up, they were getting ready to hire some and I'm typing up the job description and I'm like, the, these are all my skills. So I talked to my, I get licensed to do more. Ended up doing that for about eight years. And um, I won't get into that whole thing. We might get into it later. But um, I decided in the spring just to walk away from that um, 
that field, you know, the whole thing, it just was not aligned with what I wanted to do. Some of the things I saw, the way it was affecting my health, the way people talked to me, just all of it was a continual gross feeling for me. So decided to walk away. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. And then owning a yoga studio fell into my path. And I'd always thought I might go into coaching eventually. I thought it would probably be mortgage coaching, but um, yeah, I just didn't want anything to do with that industry anymore. So kind of found my way to where I am now. So yeah, that's my hills and valleys of, of my career path so far. I think it's interesting when you, when I talk to people who have a diverse career path, um, where that career path has taken them, because I found at least in, in my case, it's, it's not so much the career, but the learning process that I'm, I'm going Mm -hmm. through. So I'm wondering if, was that kind of what you found too, that it wasn't so much a career path because you're zigzagging it all Mm -hmm. over the place, but more of, of what you're learning. Was that kind of what you experienced or was that just mine? (laughs) No, I think you're exactly right. I think, and I think that's really two pronged because I think it's partially the skills that you're learning because really in my world, fundraising and doing mortgages were very similar fields. And you might not think that they are, but they're both dealing with a sensitive topic, which is people's money Mm -hmm. and making sure you're following the rules and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So that was a pretty natural fit. The other prong I find are the people that you meet. So one of my bosses in the mortgage industry was our board president when I worked for Purdue. So you just never know kind of where those people pop up. A lot of my customers were my sorority sisters from college or people that I'd met along the way. And so, you know, I think you're exactly right. Like it doesn't have to, and that's that's another thing I'll preach to everyone listening that it doesn't have nothing. None of this has to make sense to anyone, but you and your family. And so it's okay if you're, you know, just need a drastic left turn somewhere else. That's okay. Right. Absolutely. I, and I, I wish more people had courage to do that because, mm-hmm. because it can be scary, right? Yeah. You know, to, to, it, sometimes it feels like you're completely starting over, right. Mm-hmm. And like revamping yourself, but to have the courage to try something new and put on a new you, so to speak, mm-hmm. right. Is it's kind of yeah. exhilarating. So Absolutely. yeah, super fun. So yeah. you're still involved in a lot of stuff with your, your coaching and, mm-hmm. um, Tell us a little bit about that and your yoga studio. And then, and you've got some other projects that you're working on too. So I have all kinds of things going I know, on. Like, yes. I, I, and I'm honestly, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a woman after my own heart. Yes. <laughs> I love to hear that because I mean, some people like visibly have this like taken aback when I tell them everything that I'm doing, but again, it all flows and makes sense and is all right. connected in my mind. Um, so yes, first thing that I have going on, I did end up opening a yoga studio this summer and I like to tell the story of kind of how that fell in my lap. So I found myself in this, in the midst of this unemployment way. Um, and I say self employment and I was approached by a real estate friend that there was a building for sale, um, that he had listed. It was a four unit building. One of the units was a yoga studio and he knew that I was interested in that, and so I met with the the gal and I just, one of those things where the math wasn't mathing for me. And I was also, you know, I'm unemployed. I kind of don't want to spend all of my free cash. Right. So, you know, that part did not work out, but I ended up making a connection with the owner. And she said, I just really feel like you're meant to be in this space. Would you be interested in one of the other units that isn't set up to be a yoga studio, but very easily could be? And so, as you alluded to in my biography, I said, why not? And, you know, decided to open a yoga studio. So I think that was mid-June and we opened on uh, July 15th this year. So, so got the yoga studio going in the midst of um, figuring out and starting out with coaching. And what I really focus on with people in my coaching practice is their mindset. And so exactly what you're talking about, Brenda, with, you know, being comfortable with the status quo. And, you know, I really want to do something, but someone's telling me I can't or just working around a lot of those things. And, you know, it very, sometimes it's very hard because it's like, is this therapy or is this coaching? And so trying to figure out that delineation and there's a lot of overlap with that, but just really helping people work through um, whatever it is they want to do. I've got a client and he wanted to write a book. Well, first session, he tells me he's got the book already written. He just doesn't know what to do with it. So we put a plan in place and a a week later, he's self-published on Amazon and he's a writer, you know, so it just 
sometimes, and I always say to people like, I'm not coming up with any earth shattering philosophies that are just going to change your life. A lot of times I'm just reflecting back to you. And, and I hear myself say things in coaching and I'm like, well, geez, Laura, take your own advice here. So it just, you know, it, it's one of those things. I think sometimes you just need that neutral party. That's not emotionally invested. Like you are, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm not the one paying your bills. So ultimately you have to be the person to decide that. But at the same time, I'm tells you, you can absolutely do this if you want to. And that can come from relationships. I always use where I live as an example. My husband always says we can't move crazy. Like there is no move using not to, when we have a lot of but just keeping, you know, keeping those kind of things in your mind, I think is huge. So that's what I work on a lot with coaching. Um, and then last thing I'll throw in, I've got a lot of little side projects with all of this. But um, when I was a mortgage lender about three years ago, I bought a 14 foot box truck um, for my customers to use. And so if you closed a loan with me, that was kind of one of the perks was you could use this truck for free. Well, the truck became known as Millie, the moving truck. And so when I left lending, I thought, okay, I'm going to sell this truck. So all summer, I half-heartedly, you know, put it out to sell. And I would kept getting like really low ball offers and, you know, just it wasn't, wasn't feeling right to sell it. And so finally, someone said to me, you're meant to own this truck. And I thought, okay, well, and I got to thinking about it. And really, yes, my customers definitely use the truck. But what ended up happening a lot more was a lot of nonprofits in the area ended up using the truck. And so she's done everything from we have a special needs prom. They, she hauled dresses for them. She's picked up pies for the PTO fundraiser. She's helped people with house fires. I mean, she's done a lot of things. So I really thought there's got to be a way to capture Millie, you know, doing her thing, but also paying her bills at the same time. And so um, we started Millie, the good moving truck, and we're hoping to become a nonprofit. We're not quite there yet, but basically what people do is people rent her for personal or business use. And then that allows a nonprofit to use her for free. So she gets wow, a lot of miles. That's cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she gets a lot of miles. She's helped the civic theater here in town recently and done all kinds of things. So it's really cool to have that service. And, you know, a box truck is something that Mm, I'd say 99% of people are never going to own and you probably no. have no need to own that. However, if you have it and you need it, it is a huge blessing. And so, yeah, so we have Millie. So all these little, little things just after my own heart that I have going on, but it's a lot of fun. I love that. So tell me what does why not mean to you? Like, and how do you live that? Yeah. So, um, I have always been a very independent, very stubborn person. And so I think part of that comes from when someone tells me I can't do something, I want to say, why not? Why can't I do that? You know, I, you can't do this. And I think it's the, the little feminist heart in me too, of like, girls can't do this. And you know, that kind of thing mm -mm, that just rubs me the wrong way. But really, I think a lot of this stem from working as a mortgage lender, I would have people come into my office and I say people, I would have women come into my office and this is a very broad stroke that I'm going to paint this picture with, but you'll get the idea. So I would have these gals come in, they have their down payment saved, they have their credit ready to go, and they would bring with them this deadbeat boyfriend or this deadbeat husband with them who, for some reason, had bad credit and couldn't be on the loan or they didn't have a job or, you know, insert anything here. And I just wanted to scream at these women like, why are you still in this relationship? Now, I will say I'm not in the relationship, so can't say for sure. But I think part of it is a lot of the women and part of it's just the culture of where I live. is like, well, you have to have that, that man that, you know, that you can't do things on your own. And of course, my, my brain is like, well, why can't I? And um, so I think a lot of that just and I think a lot of it too is with why not people get stuck in the comfort and myself included. Absolutely. But you know, if you say, I want to go be a llama farmer in Peru and someone's going to say, well, you can't do that. I think it's not going to take money. It's not going to take work. It's not going to take, you know, some logistics, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that. And so I think, but you have to, we look at the whole road in between what we're, where we are and what we want. And that's where we kind of get ourselves and like talk ourselves out of it. And so my whole goal with coaching is like, okay, we're going to keep this thing that you want to do. And keep saying to yourself, why can't I do this? And every roadblock that pops in your way is just something you have to go around. It's not, you know, a 
four walls that are built around you. So I think, yeah, that's the, that's my whole spiel on why not, because I just feel like people, people will talk themselves out of things pretty easily or let other people talk them out of them. Oh, and I think that's huge. You know, we, it it really is a dream killer, you know, when, Mm -hmm. when we talk to somebody or have that inner dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it just, we just get scared. And and that's really ultimately what it is, is just fear, right? It is. So, it is. Yeah. So I love that. And I've said it before on this podcast, you know, everything good is on the other side of fear, you know, it's and it's true. Just, it's man, so it, true. You just get beyond that. And it's, mm-hmm. oh, it's so scary though, sometimes because yeah. you just think, oh, what if I fail or what if I succeed? Right. right? Or, you know, what's going to change. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, and it's so good to talk to somebody about stuff like that because, when we're in it, you know, we just, we can't see the whole picture, you know, we can't Mm -hmm. see the forest through the trees, you know? So that's really amazing. Yeah. And I think, you know, with the forest for the trees thing too, sometimes you just need somebody to show you that little tiny pivot. If you take two steps to the left, it's right there. And so I think, yeah, a lot of times that's what you, why you'd invest in a coach is to do that. Absolutely. Firm Mm -hmm. believer in coaches. So in your bio, you talked about how money follows what mm-hmm. you are here on earth to do. So I'm, I read that and I was like, oh, I'm super intrigued by that. So, yeah. so take a deep dive into that for me. Yeah. And I think there are so many examples. Um, I mean, even if they're people you don't know, but there are a lot of people I do know that this has been the case for them, that they've had this dream and they, and I'll give you a few examples of, of these things here, but they've had this dream and they've turned it into something incredible just by fully believing in the dream, by knowing I'm good at this. This is what I'm here to do. And I think that that was part of my hesitation in leaving the mortgage world because that happens to us a lot, especially if you're in a role where you are beneficial to someone. So I, when I was talking about leaving mortgages, I'd have a lot of people say, but what am I going to do? You're my go-to. You always get my loans closed. You always, and it's like, okay, but that, that is killing me. (laughs) So you have to kind of think like, what, is just like, if, if that's your job and you could make a million dollars doing it, like it's the light is just going to exude from your pores. And I think that's, you know, and it's hard to find that I'm still kind of searching through exactly what that looks like. And I think, um, you know, once you figure that out though, I think, you know, there's really no stopping you. The, the why not's not even a question because you know what the why is and why you're doing it. And so a couple of examples of this that I think are really fun. So I was actually on a cruise um, around the new year time frame, And I met a guy that worked on the cruise ship and his husband has a job where he makes almost a million dollars a year. And he travels around Europe servicing the really huge, gigantic old organs that are in cathedrals and churches in Europe. And I think that's such a niche thing, right? Like if you were to go out and put an ad billboard up and said, I clean organs, like. Right. That's a waste of money, right? <laughs> he had about it. He's in such high demand does it like four months out of the year and makes a million dollars. So I feel like, you know, you just got to figure out those things. Another, um, another example of this. So where I live locally, we have a really great, um, holiday program called secret families. And it literally, the guy that started it, he and his wife were right before Christmas and need anything. What if we spend on ourselves to another family that's not going to have it? So it has now expanded. I think it's in four or five counties around me. Um, It's been on the Today Show. It's been on Good Morning America, but it's turned into this gigantic shut down a couple of the box stores here in town in the morning, you know, to shop. All these people get, I mean, and it's, I think there were like 1,100 families that were served by it last year, and it's just turned into this massive undertaking and I mean, hundreds of volunteers and just all of this. And so it was just because he had this dream, like we can give back and that's not money coming into them. But I, you know, it boggles my mind to think about the millions of dollars that that's brought through to help people over the years. So, so I just think, you know, that is a huge part of what we do. What I do in coaching is really boiling down on like, what is it that just lights you on fire? And for me, it's 
somebody realizing that they're not stuck in their circumstances and helping them get to that spot because, you know, and there's all kinds of variations of that. But I feel like if, if I can help people, like I am so on, I'm such an inter, so lit up after a code because it just, gosh, we always leave on a good, these positive things are happening. And I just love being kind of the conduit for that. That's awesome. What do you find are some of the most common blocks that people have that's preventing them from really going after what they really want to do? I'd say the number one is money. Oh, I think, and and we all can think of all the ways you either don't write before the dream. You're stuck because you can't go pursue your goal to be a llama farmer in Peru because you still have a mortgage in Indiana that isn't just going to go away or you can't uproot your family or, you know, so I think finances um, is probably one of the huge, huge blocks that we work around. And, you know, there's a myriad of ways I could do probably five podcasts on working through that. I think finding your support system is another huge block that people have. So you may yeah. have a spouse, a family member, a, a friend, a neighbor, whoever it is that just is constantly in your ear telling you that you can't do something. And that talked about courage earlier that like at some point, you know, that kill say, okay, I'm going to be the best, you know, the best at what I do. But if you're coming home and somebody's like, well, you wasted time doing that today. Like you can only kind of put up with some of that for so long. And I mean, and I mean, why not can go really into some really deep and heavy stuff. So I think, you know, there's a lot to that. You know, if you have a partner that's not supporting you, that's probably a bigger conversation. And, you know, a lot of people may not even want to want to face that. But I would say those are probably the two most common. Um, the uh, Yeah, really finance kind of goes into the whole thing of like worthiness and, you know, right. who, who am I to try to do this or that kind of a thing. And, you know, I think it has a lot to do with how you were raised and where you lived and what your background is and all of those kinds of things. Right. And, you know, it, that's so interesting that you say that and it, finances just covers so much, you know, but right. you really, I mean, those really are two major pillars that you've, you've got to have. So how do people break through that? I know there's like, I mean, we're generalizing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean, that's, but it, it really is. So how do you help somebody who just has a cash flow problem? Like they're like, I want to do this. I just don't have any money to, yeah to cover me. So, I mean, but ultimately that is a mental block too, because, mm -hmm. you know, with, if they really want to find a way they can find it. Right. So how do you help Absolutely. do that? Yeah. I think, and, and I will say a lot of what I work with, and I know it gets a little bit in like the woo territory, but that's okay. Um, is really working on that abundance sort of mindset. So there's a reason that people that feel that they always live paycheck to paycheck feel like they're always going to live paycheck to paycheck. So you really just, it's a lot of inner work, I think, to start very base level to start with that, okay, I deserve to do this and I'm going to figure out how. And what I always encourage people to do, and I'm I'm in the middle of this myself, is, um, you know, if you have a circumstance in working for your dream, maybe it is you take on a second job on the weekends or you start tutoring or you sell stuff on Etsy or whatever the case may be, when you start doing that, just knowing, yeah, this really stinks right now, but it's getting me to the dream and it's temporary. Right. Or the other mindset piece that I work with people a lot on is like, okay, I just want to quit this job. I hate this job so much. So you have a couple of options. One is to change your mindset about the job. Like, okay, what do I, what do I actually like about this? And, um, I don't remember if we're a video podcast or not, but I have this little stone that I keep on my computer yeah. here that says gratitude. And so, uh, being great, positive in that job. Now, I decided this is never going to get better. And I'll tell a quick story on that. I was literally, I was struggling with a panic attack so bad, it made me go to the ER. And I'm sitting in the ER about their loans. And so I'm saying, hey, I'm actually in the ER. Can I get with you later? And people are saying to me, yeah, just tech. I'm sorry getting ahead. I'm ER right now. And so, you know, my real wake up call that it just never, it was never going to get better doing it. Like I did where I just got kind of mad and, you know, <laughs> it was done with it, but with the financial stuff, like 
giving yourself an exit plan is one of the ways to get. And how I have people change their mindset with that is, to, okay, this as much as I need viewing them just more like a client. They are a client that I am giving my services to. And this particular client requires me to be in a chair from eight to five or whatever it is. So really kind of saying like, and I think part of that too, and I'm huge with this, like, even though I'm a coach and even though I own a yoga studio, I don't want that to be my entire identity. And I feel like in our culture in the United States, like that's the first question we ask people, right? Is what do you do for a living? And so I think, you know, just kind of getting yourself into that mindset of I am whatever it is that you want to become instead of, you know, I'm a nurse who doesn't want to do this anymore or, you know, whatever the case may be. But I think you just have to get really scrappy when it comes to the finance part of things. And I mean, I do this regularly is I come up with a list. Let's say I need $10,000. That's a lot of money, but we'll, you know, I need $10,000. I will sit down and come up with 20 things I can do that will at least get me close to that $10,000. And you might be surprised, like let your subconscious work on stuff like that while you're sleeping And you may be really surprised at what you come up with. Maybe it's, oh yeah, I mean, for me, I'm looking at it right here out my window, but like my dad has all these antique tractors that are just sitting around like, okay, can I get him motivated to sell those, you know, and that kind of, so there's, you know, there's stuff like that, that you may look at every single day. And then one day it's like, oh, that might be my ticket to, you know, to do that. And it may be selling, oh, I could make something I could, you know, I'm, I, sew. I told you about my home ec background, like. I could start doing tailoring work for people until, you know, and no, I don't want to do that forever, but Hey, it's going to get me closer to the goal. And I think to just tracking those types of things um, is huge. And just knowing like what your, what your bottom dollar is like, okay, I can quit my job when X and then just work towards that, you know, whatever it is. I love that tracking. I, okay. I actually hate tracking. Mm-hmm. It's such a pain. That's okay. Yeah. Butt, right. <laughs> I mean, is, you know, but I have actually found that I love having the data, right? Yes. From yes. from the tracking. It's really annoying to do it, but but having that information so that you know where you're at at any given point is just mm-hmm. so, so vital. And I right. love your idea of writing things down. And Mm -hmm. I've done this numerous times and I'll even like put it down and then go back to it and put it down, you know, Mm -hmm. until I have just fully exhausted. And some of the things I come up with are just so off the wall nuts. Yeah. You know, yeah. But to me, it's clutter, right? So you got to get, get it all out of there Mm -hmm. because you're, you're just making space for the, the deeper ideas. Right. 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 Absolutely. And I love, I love that making space too. And I think that that is huge, especially when it comes to finances, like really working through what your hangups are with money is huge because we all have baggage. I think the statistic is that most of us have a solid view of money by the time we're seven years old. And so you're constantly fighting that seven-year-old with whatever it is, whether it's telling yourself I'm bad with money or I made mistakes or, you know, whatever it is. And we all make mistakes and that's, you know, that's just part of life. But I think part of where we get hung up on that is we think the goal is so unattainable, but if we'd really sit down and look at our numbers, you know, maybe it's like, okay, well, I need to replace my salary and I bring home $5,000 a month. And so you start looking like, okay, if I want to do this thing, I really just have to bring in 5,000 a month. And so kind of looking and everybody's going to have a different threshold. So you got to kind of know what yours is and, and kind of figure things out that way. And, you know, I think it really is a partnership, especially if you're married or, you know, have, have others in your household that you've got to get everybody on board with the dream. Um, But it's not to say you can't do it without that support. I've seen a lot of people that are like, yeah, my husband really doesn't understand what I do. And so I just (laughs) go, go about my day and he's happy that we can pay our bills, you know, so just kind of figure out where you fall on that spectrum, I think is huge. I love that. Well, and the money stuff, it does get tied up in the identity of who Mm -hmm. we are, you know, because it's, it's now not just who am I, but what value do I have? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that you have to work out too. So I want to get back to this identity piece, because I thought that was so interesting that you brought that up. And so I'm, I'm also a real estate agent. And we talked a little bit about yeah, absolutely. that before. 
And, um, and so when you, when you said that the money follows what you're meant to do, I thought that was so fascinating because I'm in this space now where I'm transitioning, right? Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I still, I want real estate to be more of a a tool that I Mm -hmm. use rather than a career, right? And I'm super glad that I've done it and I've learned so much from it. But it's interesting because I, I, I do a lot of networking, local network groups mm-hmm. and whatnot. And so, you know, you go to these networking groups and you have to introduce yourself. And usually there's like a 30 second mm-hmm. commercial yeah. that you're, you got to pitch what you're doing and stuff. And so I have pitched real estate for five years. Right. Yeah. And now I'm just like, okay, like I got up there. I'm like, I don't even know what to say anymore because, and I've got a, a lender who goes there and he goes, talk about housing. <laughs> and I said, but I'm so much more than housing. Right, right. Right. And so it's like, it was interesting because it's like my identity has like expanded, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's um, when you really own a different identity, it's interesting how things come into your life. Right. And how like it, it's just, it totally changes. So, yeah. yeah. And I'll throw in something. And I think this is so fascinating because every time I do it, I am pleasantly surprised. So one of the things I've been doing is instead of asking people what they do, because small talk is awkward. I'll just say that we all know it is. We all have to do it. It's awkward. So instead of asking people first what they do, I'll ask people what they're excited about in their life right now. And that has been, it's been such a game changer question. And I um, had the opportunity to facilitate a panel of professional women a couple weeks ago. And I started off the panel with that question. And I mean, I had an attorney, a fashion designer and a financial planner on that panel. And all of them, one lady was like, we're about to finish our kitchen remodel. I'm so excited. One lady said, my daughter just got accepted to college and none of their answers were related to their careers. And I just love that because it, it delves into you as a person, which is what I really want to want people to tap into when they're trying to figure out, because I think a lot of us get stuck in these jobs or in these situations because we're conforming and I'm, I am not that rebellious of a person. I know I feel like I sound like it when I'm talking in my coaching mode, but I mean, I, you know, I've always been a rule follower and all of those things. And I think a lot of us are just, it doesn't, you know, we're those round pegs trying to fit in those square holes when it comes to careers and, you know, what we're supposed to be doing with our lives. And so I think, yeah, that's hugely important to dig into that deeper identity of yourself instead of just what do you do for a living? So, right. yeah, I love that so, so much. And really you're tapping into what brings them joy and absolutely and really seeing them as a person, not mm-hmm. just a, a career. Yeah, absolutely. Which I love. That's yeah, that's amazing. Okay. So on your website, you talk a little bit about burnout and Mm -hmm. how you've experienced burnout. So tell me a little bit about your experience with that and how do you prevent it now? Yeah. So I think a big part of the preventing burnout is just knowing, knowing yourself and knowing what's going to, and I, 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 tread carefully when I talk about burnout, because I feel like a lot of the things you'll read or hear about burnout is like, you just need to completely change your situation. Everything's, you know, you got to change jobs. You got to get out of that house. You got to wait till your kids are growing. You know, just like the situation has to change for you to be whole again, which is really hard when you're in the middle of it. And you're like, why I can't leave this, you know, that's not an option for me. So I feel like with burnout, one of the things I heard um, about this time last year that I really, if people are telling me they're feeling burnout, like this is the first place I start with them. And it's hopefully kind of long and I can send it to you later, Brenda, if you want. But um, it's this idea of you take a look at everything you do and maybe you just keep a journal of what you do all day. So maybe it's, you know, I wake up at six and then for an hour I corral kids and then I get them on the bus and then, you know, breakfast is chaos. And then I sit in traffic and just really going through your entire week and you can just do it for a couple of days, but deciding what in your life is there that you can automate, what you can delegate, what you can completely delete, what you can defer, and then what you actually need to do. Because a lot of times, and you know, like automate, I think a good example of that is like, are you spending all this time having to remember to pay bills? Can you automate those? 
um, delegating? Is there somebody else that can take care of that for you? Um, deleting is pretty self-explanatory. Like things that you're just doing. We all have things that we're just doing just because, and it's like, why, why have it? Right. Yeah. It's not necessary. And it right. Be, and it, it doesn't always have to be an immediate deletion. I know for me in the past, it's been, I'm on this nonprofit board and I'm not going to be returning. So, you know, just those, I had a year of no, where I was like, no, thank you. You know, thanks for asking. No, thank you. So just kind of looking at those things, um, what you can defer. So maybe it's something like you've been really, you know, I'll, give an example here at my house, we need new windows. And so I have deferred that for a couple of years because I've been frustrated with contractors coming out and giving me quotes. So that's gotten deferred. And then do you like, yeah, you got to brush your teeth. Nobody else can brush your teeth for you. So, you know, just kind of <laughs> making a list of that. And I think that really pulls into perspective for people where their burnout may be coming from. So, you know, if it's one of the things I have to do is go to all of these meetings while I'm at the office. Well, having a candid conversation with the people also involved, because I, I might guess that they're feeling the same way that, okay, could we combine these meetings? Is this something that we could shorten? And then one of us port of what we need or, you know, whatever the case may be, just looking at those kind of ways, maybe the answer is to come clean your house for you. And that, $200 that you spend to have your house cleaned sat money well spent. So you can kind of look at some of those things in your life and see. And I think ultimately with the burnout, like that list may lead you to I'm in the exact wrong career. I this and that's and that's where I I myself got to sitting in the ER. People don't care. And you're exactly right when you said earlier about the, you know, and real estate, we know, is its whole other animal. But I was never going to be seen as Laura, the person. I was always the lender that they needed something from. And that wasn't going to change. And that's just the industry. And that's the way it was. So my decision in that, my burnout, was to get myself out of there. And I think a lot of times, especially if you're working towards a why not goal, changing that mindset a little bit can help you prevent the burnout until you can get to where you want to be. So if you put an end date on that job, that can help you do the job in the meantime, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think sometimes just knowing that there's an end in sight to something mm -hmm. gives you just that little bit extra energy just to get yeah. everything done. Right. Yes. Right. So I love that. I, I think that's, I think burnout is such a, a common thing, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. it's, I love that. I just think there's hope, you know, and there's ways yes. around it. And like, you just don't have to be in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately burnout is your body saying, okay, something needs to change. Right. And, and, right. And so it's immensely just, or physically, I mean, exactly. you may, like, I am constantly sick. What gives like, take a look. It is probably something stress or some way stress is coming out in your body. Yeah hundred percent. Okay. So let's talk about dreaming big, right? Mm -hmm. I know because I think it's part of the why not. Yes, right? absolutely. But um, this is something that I've tried to do in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and, but I found that not everybody does this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. um, what, what is that? How do you, how do you dream big? Yeah, I think um, I think part of this for me, and I will preface this by saying, like, I have had about as charmed a life as a person can have. <laughs> so I had, you know, two great parents, like very great childhood. I, you know, till recently have not had a lot of trauma in my, you know, so I'm, I feel like I'm very blessed with that. But at the same time, I think even if you are not a person that grew up hearing that you could do anything, that's a muscle that you can retrain. And so I think that unwavering self-belief is a lot of places where people get hung up in the big dream. So again, it's that, well, who do I think I am trying yeah, to do the this? Imposter syndrome. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And so, you know, and so what I tend to do in that situation is I look at people and I'm like, I'm so much insert adjective here more than this person, but they're doing it. You know, I, I joke my, kids want to be YouTubers. And I'm like, these ding dongs are just, you know, hanging out in a warehouse with their friends, throwing pies at each other, making millions of dollars. So why can't I do X, Y, Z? And so I think, you know, kind of, cause I'm a humor person and I think, you know, kind of putting a little fun spin on it can help. But I think, 
you just really, I mean, in, I think for me, when I'm having people dream big, like you have to put yourself actually into the dream. So you have to be, and I do that in my yoga classes, like, okay, go to the, the best place you can imagine. What do you smell? What do you taste? What do you hear? What do you see? Who's with you? What time did you wake up? Like really getting deep, deep, deep in that daydream. And that really does, there's brain chemistry that kind of gets changed when we do things like that. And so just keeping those dreams before you. And you don't have to know, and this is something I'm very much working on myself. You don't have to know how you're going to get there. You just need to start dreaming the dream and those things will open themselves up to you. So I think, you know, it's it's crazy. And, and I'll use vision boards as an example. That's a tool that I use quite a bit. And I did a vision board probably 15 or 20 years ago. And I put on, you know, the car that I wanted and, you know, all of these things. Fast forward, I found that vision board and I see that that car is in the garage right now. And so I had no idea when I made that, that I was going to become a mortgage lender and have the means to do what I wanted to do. But I just let that unfold as it would. And so times if we have this dream, we stop a couple steps into it. Um, you know, for example, weight loss, you want to lose 30 pounds and you've only lost two we stop because we haven't gotten to the full 30 pounds and you just have to be tenacious, be scrappy, like I said, and stay after it. I love that. You know, sometimes I know for myself, I, I generally try to like, just look at myself because I figure not everybody's like me. But, right. Right. Yeah. But, right, but, but I, I, I sometimes get to where this is what I want to have happen. And this is how it's going to happen. And this is the time frame. <laughs> that it's going mm-hmm. to happen. Right. right? And so right. I get so locked into how I think it's going to be that I sometimes have blinders on and I don't see other avenues of possibility. Right. 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 And so it's, I'm constantly having to remove those blinders and go, okay, I don't have to have it happen this way. I can, mm-hmm. you know, it can, I, you know, it just making it, making sure you're open to those other possibilities, I think it's huge, huge, huge. Yeah. And I think it takes a little bit of humility with that too, especially for someone like me, because I'm like, I know what I need to do to do this. And so if it deviates from the path, that just can't happen. And I don't know it all. And so I need to realize that, you know, that it may present itself in a completely different way. Right. Uh, that That's so great. I'm so glad mm. that we we're able to talk about that. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So what do you think is like a first step? Like, let's say people, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, I've always wanted to do this. Like, what would you say? What's your first step towards <laughs> obtaining that, that big dream? Yeah. I think that visualization piece is the absolute first step. And so that can look however it's going to look for you. It can be you laying in your bed, daydreaming about it very clearly. It could be journaling. It can be talking to a friend about it specifically. It, you know, it, whatever it is that's going to make it crystal clear that you can literally insert yourself into that. Maybe it's, you know, maybe your dream is to be a nurse. And so you picture yourself in those scrubs at the hospital doing what you do or, you know, whatever it is that's, you know, and just, and feel all of the feelings that it is going to come with that. And so it's, and it may be disbelief. I can't believe I made it here and that's okay. And so I think that visualization, that's always where I start with people because if you're just like, I'm going to get on the road, but I don't know where I'm going. It's kind of like that, that, you don't know what, build, yeah, you don't know what yeah, building the do, plane right. as it's flying. Like that's not going to get you where you want to be with your goal. I love that. You know, and when I first started visualization, it was hard for me. Like I, I really had a hard time. Like, well, how do I visualize it when I don't know what it's going to look like? Right. right? You know, right. so it's, so, but it's, so I even was talking to like, I would ask people, how do you do this? How, you know? And I've just found that, okay, if I can just pick one new detail every day. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then build out my, my picture of what's going on in my head, you know, then I can build out, okay, well, what would I say to somebody then, you mm-hmm. know? And, and so it gets deeper and deeper and deeper until I've got this right. whole storyboard. Right. Right. And so right. that's, if you just work on it just a little bit at a time, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it is possible, you know, anybody can do it tr- truly. Absolutely. And you know what? I found people who can't do it in their head, but they have to maybe get it out on paper. Maybe if they draw mm-hmm. it or, yep. or just 
in words Mm -hmm. describe it. You know, I think any way you do that, I think is a good thing to do. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, this has been such a wonderful conversation. Yes, this is so, so fun. Yes, I sorry know, about my really internet nice. being a pain, but <laughs> you know what? It's that it's just technology. It's life, right? It is. It is. <laughs> you yeah. know, we just do the best that we can. So, but yeah, yeah this, that's awesome. So, if um, okay, one more question, actually, two. Yeah. What do you have like a golden nugget that you'd like to share? Like just a piece of wisdom that you've mm-hmm. learned that you'd like to share with our listeners. I mean, I really think one of the biggest things I learned, if you have a want or a dream, it is yours for a reason. Um, I love, I don't know if you've ever read the book, Big Magic by Liz Gilbert, but she talks about that there's all this create creativity and these dreams and these ideas floating around. And if you don't grab it, it's going to go on to somebody else. And I love that analogy because I feel like, you know, there's, even if it seems like the silliest thing. And I'll use myself as an example. My, I found the, my husband and I are obsessed with England. We make a point to travel there once a year. We live in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. Like I literally told you about my tractor that's sitting outside. There would be no purpose a, that two people from the same place would be as obsessed with the, this far off land <laughs> as, as we are. But you know, we really embrace that that was ours for a reason. And, you know, we've traveled there. We know like my soul feels at home there. And so uh, don't discount if you have a dream to do something, even if it seems super far-fetched. I love that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I think we can just take a look at them. Okay, just do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's such great advice. I love that. Okay. What do you feel like your purpose is now? I mean, you've done all these different things. You're on this new career yeah. path. You know, what's what? And I probably shouldn't say new because you've been doing it for a while. But, That's okay. Right? <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, what do you feel like your your purpose is right now? I mean, I really feel like my purpose, my purpose is to help people find their purpose and walk towards their purpose because I, like I said, it just lights me up when somebody, you know, doesn't think something's possible, you know, when a coaching client calls and says, you're not going to guess what I had. Like, I love those calls and, you know, it's, it just lights me up. And I, I love that. I love that people love to give me their good news. If that makes sense. Like that makes yeah. my heart so happy that they are like, I got to tell Laura, like that makes me so happy. So I think, you know, that tells me too, that I'm on the right path with what I'm supposed to be doing. I love that. That's mm-hmm. so great. I think we're just kindred spirits. So yes, I love it. Yeah. When I think when you messaged me, I was like, I think we may have a lot of things in common. I, know, here, I think That's so. Awesome. Yep. Yep. <laughs> For sure. I love that. Awesome. So if our listeners want to reach out to you, how can they find you? Yeah, a couple different ways. Um, I'm on Instagram. My um coaching profile is at Laura Takes a Breath. And so I just try to post little like quotes or, you know, I do a little, I do a Friday, I'm in love with myself video. So just a little, like less than a minute kind of me, you know, those kinds of things. And then there's a lot more information, which is lauramickler.com. So yeah, you can find me all the ways. I love that. Thank you so much, Laura. Yeah. It's just been so fun chatting with you. I got mm-hmm. a lot out of it. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me for sure. Right. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. And for those of you who are listening, um, just remember that you have a purpose too. We all have a purpose and you can find your purpose in your story. Until next time, take care. Bye. Celebrate your dreams. Let them take flight. For you are a star shining bright in every step.